Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. In this quick video, we're going to learn how to get the mouse world position in both 2D and 3D. This is really simple, but they require different methods. I receive a lot of comments from people asking why their code doesn't work, and a lot of the times the issue is that they're using the 2D method in a 3D game, which really does not work. So first, let's see the 2D version, which is super simple. Over here, I have my demo scene. All I have is this sprite, and I want it to follow the mouse. The main camera over here is set up in 2D, so the projection is orthographic. It is placed on 0, 0 and minus 10 on the Z, so the center of the screen is on 0, 0. And over here on the size, it's got an orthographic size of 10, meaning that down here is on 0, 0, up here is on 0, plus 10, and down here on 0, minus 10. Okay, so let's begin by making our script. Name this the mouse position 2D, and here I'm going to attach it to my mouse target object. Okay, so here let's do things step by step. So let's make a simple update. And on our update, let's just do a debug.log on the mouse position. And we're going to grab it through the input and grab the mouse position. So let's see what this one returns. And here with the game running, we can see what's happening. So you can see that it does not return the mouse wrong position. So down the center, we do not get a 0, 0. Instead, if I go over here to the lower left corner, that's where I get the 0, 0. And if I go onto the upper right corner, it's at this value, which is the width and height of this game window. So if you look into the stats, the game window has this screen size, 1044 by 587. And if I put it right down the corner, yep, it's exactly that one. So what we get from here is the screen position. Now we need to convert that screen position into a world position. And in order to do that, we're going to need a reference to our camera. So let's add it up here, make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor of the camera. Let's call it the main camera. And here in the editor, we see the field. Let's just drag the main camera. All right. So we have our camera reference. Now, alternatively, if you only use one camera, you can directly use camera.main. If you only have one camera, then using this is perfectly fine. I'm only using this method just so it's more adaptable, so you can use it with any camera you want. Okay, so with this, we have our camera. And now we can go into the camera and use the function screen to world point. This one transforms a point from screen space into world space. So in here, we input input.mouseposition, which as we saw was in screen space. So if we now do a debug.log on this one and get rid of this one. So if we do this, let's see what it returns. And yep, now it does seem correct. So if we put right down the center, we do see a 0, 0. And up here, we do see a 0 plus 10. And down here, a 0 minus 10. Now we also do see a slight issue on the Z. So essentially, the Z that it's returning is the same Z as on the main camera. So here, the main camera is on Z of minus 10. Whereas most of the world is probably going to be on a Z of zero. So here, one simple thing is to make a vector three for the mouse world position. And we grab it from this one. Then we take the mouse world position and set the Z to zero. And then let's just change this transform position to be in that one. So now it should follow the mouse. And yep, now everything is working perfectly. So as I move the mouse, the sprite is being placed exactly where it should be. So I'm correctly getting the mouse world position in a 2D game. So this is the method for doing it. You take the main camera, do a screen to world point on the input mouse position, and then if you want, you zero out the Z, and then you have the mouse world position in a 2D game. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. All right, so now onto the 3D method. Here is my demo 3D scene. It's pretty much the same thing as before. So I've got a main camera, now it's set to perspective, and then I've got a mouse target just with a nice visual. And one extra thing is over here, I've got a ground object, and this one we can see in the scene view. Yep, this is my ground object. And the important thing is it does have a collider. We're going to see why in a bit. So now let's first actually try and see the error that so many people have. So let's try using the 2D method in this scene and see what happens. So on the mouse target, if I just drag the mouse position 2D and drag the main camera reference, let's see. And yep, the game is running, but I am moving my mouse and there you go, it does not change the position. So this is the error that you see if you try to calculate the mouse world position using the 2D method on a 3D game. This position that you're seeing here is actually the exact same thing as where the camera is. So 9.1, 13.1, 15.6. .1, yep, exactly that one. So this is the mistake that many people make. They use the 2D method on a 3D game, which just returns the camera position. The issue is that we cannot convert directly from a screen position into a world position in a 3D game. If you think about it, what you want is not the position based on the camera, but rather the position in the world where the mouse is. So what we need to do is essentially fire a laser from the camera pointing towards where the mouse is and then seeing where that position lands. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's make a new C Sharp script. Let's name it our mouse position 3D. And here on mouse target, let's get rid of the 2D version and attach the 3D. Okay. 
Now here again, first we're going to need a reference to our camera. So let's do the exact same thing. So a reference to the camera, now we set it. Here just drag it. And now we do a protoid update. And on the update, we're still going to use the input.mouse position. Except again, as we saw, this is a screen position. So then we can use the function on the camera, so main camera. And now the function that we're going to use is the screen point to ray. And we use our input mouse position as our parameter. So this will return a ray from the camera towards where the mouse position is pointing. So we grab this ray. And then all we need to do is just cast it. So we do a physics now raycast. We pass in our ray and we've got an output of raycast hit. Now this one returns true if it hits something. So if so, let's do a transform.position and we're going to go inside our raycast hit and we grab the point, which is the actual point where the ray hit the collider. Okay, so that's it, let's see. And yep, right away we can see that it does work. So wherever I place the mouse, you can see the little circle gets placed alongside the plane. All right, awesome. However, there's one potential issue here. So I'm going to drag a building onto the scene. Okay, so I added this building. And now if I put the mouse over, yep, there you go. As you can see, the mouse is indeed interacting with the building. So instead of placing the mouse on the floor, it's placing it on top of the building. Now, maybe this is what you want. For example, if you want to do some shooting, then this would be correct. However, let's say that you are making a city building game or an RTS, and what you want is for the position to be on the ground and not collide with other objects. So to solve that, we can use layers. If we select the ground object and over here on the layer, let's add a new layer. Let's name it the ground, then select the ground, put it on that layer. Okay, so far so good. And now in our 3D class, here let's expose another field and this one will be a layer mask. And now back in the editor, if we look at our script, yep, we've got a layer mask and now we can select something. So for example, let's select just the ground. So back in the code here, when we have our raycast, we can use the version that also takes in a layer mask. There you go, there's this one, which takes a ray, a raycast hit, a float for the max distance, and then the layer mask. So if we want it to go forever, we can just use float max value. And then for the layer mask, we pass in our layer mask. Okay, now let's see. And right now it is correctly interacting with the floor. And if I go towards the building, yep, there you go, now it goes through it. And now it's interacting with the floor behind it. So the mouse position is correctly ignoring the building and returns the position on the ground itself. So this is perfect for any kind of city builder or RTS where you want to ignore the actual physical objects on the scene. All right, so there it is. This is how you get the mouse position in 3D. You do a raycast from the camera towards the mouse and see where it hits. So now you can refactor this code to make it super easy to use. For example, on the 2D version, Usually when I make a new project, I always reuse my general utilities. You can download them for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And in this class, I have a very simple function to get the mouse around position and does exactly that. It goes into the world camera, which by default uses the camera main and does a screen to world point on the input mouse position. Then I just got various versions in order to get it with the Z or without the Z. These are set as static, so I can call these functions from anywhere in my code. Very useful. And for the 3D version, I reuse this class. It also has a static instance so that I can call it from anywhere. And the function is exactly what we saw. So it goes into the camera main, does a screen point array on the mouse position and just returns that point. So for example, if I want to add it to a new project, I just make a new empty game object, name it my mouse 3D. Then I add that script. Here on the script, it has a mouse collider for the layer mask. So in this case, I would put it on the ground. So just like that, in 10 seconds, I had the ability to get the mouse position in a 3D game. And now anywhere in my code, I can simply call upon this function and get the mouse world 3D position. All right, so there you have it. That's how you get the mouse world position in both 3D and 2D. They work differently, so don't make the mistake of using the 2D method in a 3D game or vice versa. Do you prefer learning through a more guided path rather than separate tutorials? Then check out my complete step-by-step -step courses starting from scratch until the final polished games. If you're into programming, then get the Awesome Builder Defender course, learn how I make my own games using code, build an awesome game that involves mechanics from city builders, tower defense, and survival games, or if you're into visual scripting, then to get the VS course, which features not one, but three complete games. A simple platformer, an action RPG, and an awesome FPS. In the visual scripting course, all of this is built without a single line of code. All games in both courses start completely from scratch and go step by step until the final polished games. All of the lectures have their project files available at every step of the way. And I'm always active answering questions every single day in the Q&A section. 
So if you're looking for a more guided path, then check out the courses at unitycodemonkey.com slash courses. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.